Hey there, how's it going? Last weekend was Ludum Dare 47. I have participated in two previous Ludum Dares. I made a video about those games a few weeks ago, and you can click the card up top if you'd like to see more. We've got a lot to get into, so let's jump in. A quick recap on the rules. Ludum Dare has two events that run simultaneously, and you can only enter one. There's the jam, which is what you would expect from a normal game jam. You make a game in a set amount of time, in this case 72 hours. You can work solo or as a team, or use art and audio assets you have the rights to use. The other event, which we'll be focusing on today because that's the one I entered, is the compo. Compo, like the jam, requires you to make a game in a set amount of time, but for this you only get 48 hours. The other added restrictions are, you must work alone, you must create all content for your game, the code, the art, the sound, the music, you are allowed to use pre-existing things like fonts. And finally, you must post your source code with the project at the end. I already normally do Game Jam solo, and I usually make all my own art assets as well, so I'm pretty comfortable with all of that. My biggest hurdle here will be the music and sound part. I usually rely on sound libraries that I've purchased over the last couple of years. But I have made my own music and sound effects in the past, so I know that I can. Lucky for me, that's a future me problem, and I don't have to worry about it right now. So, let's get into it. It just so happens that this time, Ludumdara is happening a week after the end of my game jam, which happened a week before that. The day Ludumdara started, I had just spent a week playing over 100 game entries to judge and give feedback. In fact, I was still doing my last Vim Jam gameplay stream when the Ludumdara theme was announced. Oh, it started. What do we got? Theme is stuck in a loop. Ugh. Ugh. I know I was pretty subtle in that clip, but I don't care for this theme at all. I still had a couple hours left to stream, so I figured I'd let it mull over before I could get start working later that night. Playing 20 plus games back to back in one sitting is a lot more tiring than you would think it is. But there's another game jam happening, so it's time for me to get to work. Sometime a jam theme calls to me and my ideas click right away. This is not one of those times. I do think that the fatigue of playing and giving feedback on so many games in such a short period of time did have a negative impact here. I had just seen so many different game ideas that I was having a really hard time keeping one locked into my mind as something I wanted to do. Not to mention the fact that I just didn't have any ideas to make Stuck in a Loop interesting. I recently made a game for the Kenny Jam that would have been perfect for this theme, but unfortunately I've already made that game so now I need to come up with something different. I chose to take Stuck in a Loop somewhat literally and go with a satellite that's orbiting a planet. I used the same paddle on the end of an arm technique that I used for a round and back, but this time I set the rotation point to the middle of the arm and not the end. That way I could put paddles on both ends and rotate two at once. I added the rotation behavior so that they will just permanently orbit around the planet and the player can hold down a button to make them move faster. Maybe this can be a one button mobile style game. I added projectiles that spawn off screen and attack the center of the planet. So you spin the paddles around trying to stop the projectiles from coming in and to protect the planet. There's only one problem with this. It's boring. Like real boring. I hadn't spent that long on this yet, so I decided I was going to start over. I'm just really not sure how to make the satellite moving around fun, so I'm going to go ahead and try again because I haven't spent that much time on this yet. I need to come up with another concept, and what I ended up coming up with was this Pachenko style thing that's really just kind of meh. Once again, it looks alright, but it's kind of boring and I don't really know what to do with it, so in my usual fashion, I'm going to axe it and start again. I've had the idea of having a mouse-controlled top-down game for a little while, where you click and hold and the player just moves towards your mouse, so you control everything with just the mouse. I thought it would be a fun idea. And here maybe we have the character running around a big staircase trying to make their way to the top of a tower, so they're in a big infinite loop. Yeah, I didn't get past adding controls to this one before I scrapped it as well. If you can't tell, I'm a bit scattered and really having trouble focusing on a single idea. At this point, I'm going back to my first idea of the satellite orbiting a planet. Again, it was pretty boring before, but it's definitely better than these other ideas that I just came up with. I scrapped the idea of having a one button control because, again, boring. I added the ability to move the paddles out and pick up randomly spawning pickups. This finally sparked a bit of an idea. You control defense satellites that need to protect the planet from a meteor shower that's heading this way. But the satellites will be destroyed in doing so, so you must collect new satellite parts in order to build more. With the concept finally in place, I started to make a little bit of progress. The player can have up to 8 satellites at any given time, and when one hits a meteor, it's destroyed. The movement is controlled by three inputs, one to make the satellite move faster in its orbit, one to make it move slower in its orbit, and then one to make them move outward. When the outward key is not held down, the satellites will automatically return themselves to their original base orbit around the planet. When in this state, more satellites will be spawned if the player has enough parts to do so. I had my wife try out the controls. 
She doesn't normally play games, so I feel that she's a good barometer to check how intuitive controls are. And her biggest input on the movement was that she really wanted to be able to move in the opposite direction sometimes. She didn't like having to always just push herself forward. So I added that in, and it does actually help quite a bit. I was thinking of adding some sort of energy system at this time, possibly, so I figured you could use a little bit more energy to push your satellites in the opposite direction, and then they would shift themselves back into orbit when you weren't forcing it. I made it so that the satellites can take two hits before being destroyed. Otherwise, there just had to be not enough meteors, or you had to be constantly spawning satellites, which was a bit rough. I also had a little screen shake when one of the meteors was destroyed, and it was feeling semi-okay. So at this point in development, I usually switch over to art because I have the base mechanics in, and now I need to know what it's going to look like. I grabbed a quick color palette from lowspec.com. This time, I'm using Apollo by Adam C. Yonis, who's a pretty cool artist and game dev here on YouTube and Twitch. Trying to figure out how I wanted the satellites to look took a good little while. I thought about having force fields around them, but in the end, I basically just ended up with a pod with solar panels on the side. I just wanted to go with the barest bones of what people would understand as a satellite. But to be frank, I didn't really love this look at first, and I was feeling really down on the whole game at this point. I still felt like the mechanics were somewhat boring, and I wasn't really liking the way the art was looking as I was implementing it. Not sure if you can tell, but I don't like anything I'm doing here. And I basically quit at this point. I was really tired from the previous week, and I haven't been sleeping well, so I figured, well, at least I can make a video for you all about dealing with failure. But my wife, also known as Lady Lark, who has already been awesome by helping me talk out all of my ideas through this whole time, basically told me I would be so mad at myself if I did that. She made me take a short break away from my computer and eat some food, and oh man did that help with my mood. I definitely had not been eating enough, and I was just exhausted, so my brain was not in a happy place. So that all helped a lot. Unfortunately, it didn't really make the game any more fun. Maybe it just still needs a bit more visuals. Maybe that's the problem. I added a starry background that slowly parallaxes to just give a little bit more movement and make the whole scene look a little more dynamic. And I added some particle effects to the satellite, and these give off a really cool effect that I'm super happy with. I also removed the automatic return to the planet if the player wasn't holding a key down. Now the player can use up and down to move the satellites in and out as they wish. After that, I spent way too long animating a rotating planet. The difficult thing in frame-by-frame -frame animations is that if you want something to move smooth and slow, you just have to add more and more frames. So this looks pretty basic, but it took way longer than it should have. At this point, the game is actually starting to look pretty good. There's just one problem. It's still not very fun. There's something about it that's just not that enjoyable, and I can't really describe it, and I'm not sure why. As per usual, I messaged my friend Gingerbeard to do a quick playtest for me and give me some feedback. He very nicely told me that it looks cool, but it's just missing something that keeps you in it. So with less than 24 hours left until the deadline, I'm starting over again. Yep, I'm struggling real hard with this jam, so let's see if take 4 is the magic number. Spoiler, it wasn't. I tried to make a platform where you go through a level and at the end you loop back around and do it again. And as quickly as I had built that, I realized I didn't have the time to make all the assets that I would need for this, and I had no core concept for how the game would actually work or what you're trying to do. On the other hand, I do have a game that's pretty far along already. It looks pretty good, it's just a bit off. The smart move at this stage would be to keep tweaking on the satellite game and ditch this one because it's more than likely going to be easier to make the other one fun as opposed to create this one entirely. So once again, back to the other game. Did I mention how scattered my brain was during this whole jam? I dug back into the game to try and figure out what was feeling off about this and how I could fix it. I had tweaked the movement at this point where zooming around was a lot of fun, controlling everything, going in, out, left, right, it was all pretty enjoyable. But then I finally focused in on the fact that if you're moving counterclockwise and you let go, you quickly switch back to going clockwise. I made one small change. When you hold right, the satellite moves quickly in a clockwise direction. When you release right, they move slowly in a clockwise direction. Holding left will move them quickly in a counterclockwise direction, while now releasing left has them moving slowly in a counterclockwise direction. This seems so simple, but it changed the game feel entirely. I can't say for sure, but in my opinion, it gives the player a better feeling of agency over the game. Before, it always felt like you were fighting the satellites. Now, it feels like you're controlling them. The controls finally feeling enjoyable really rejuvenated me. I generally know a game will be fun when I keep hitting the play button in the editor, even when I haven't made any changes. It's pretty late in this game's development for that to be beginning now, but I'm glad it finally has. Because of the amount of time I have left, I have to make sure that I keep everything else as simple as possible. This is Compo, so I still need to make all the music, sound effects, finish the art, make the win and lose screens, and get the menus created. Luckily, I'm pretty far along on the art already, so I finished up adding the meteors and a couple of other small tweaks here and there, as well as adding some more particle effects. 
I just cut up the satellite sprites to be the parts that you pick up. And now we've reached the time that I dread in every game jam. I am now future me and have to deal with whatever the past me slacker didn't want to do. I don't have much experience in music. I played bass in garage punk bands in high school, but I'm sorry to say that I was that stereotypical bass player that didn't really want to practice and thought it was just an easy instrument to play. It's not if you do it well. So basically, I know very little to nothing about writing music. I headed over to beatbox.co, which is a free in-browser way to make music. After placing notes around and playing with the settings, I eventually ended up with this. In my opinion, it's not terrible, it's not great or good, but it's definitely passable. And I'll take passable when it comes to music. I then used SFXR to create sound effects. Again, with very limited knowledge in audio, I have no idea how these sliders work and what they do, so I just keep hitting random, mutate, and some of the other buttons, and just seeing what happens. Then I save the sounds that I think work. I wish I had some skill with making sound effects, but really it's just more of an exercise in patience. After making and implementing all of the sound, it's time for everyone's favorite part of game design, menus! I chose a very uninspired name for the game of Orbital Defense. And before I get any comments that I spelled it incorrectly, just so you know, defense can be spelled with either a C or an S. From what I looked up, the C is more used in Britain, whereas the S is used in the United States. Now, I'm in the US, but I'm terrible at spelling, so when I typed out defense with a C and I googled it, it didn't tell me I misspelled anything, so I just went with it. I did later go back in and change all of the things to have an S instead, because I just didn't want to deal with comments of people telling me that I misspelled it. But I did that after I stopped recording, so everything you see in this video will have a C there. In my Flyer Kid game, I added a How to Play section to the main menu to see if that would make it easier for players. Also, a good number of people did that as well in their Vim Jam games, and I have to say, I do really like it. So I'm continuing that trend here and adding my how to play section directly on the menu. At this point, the game is pretty much done once everything is added in. This is the last clip I recorded this night before going to bed. And as you can see, it's after 4 a.m. I then stayed up until around 6.30 a.m. implementing it all. I went to bed for a couple hours and I got up around 10 a.m. to finalize everything and get the game submitted before the 3 p.m. deadline. I had Gingerbeard test again at this point and he enjoyed the game a lot better this time. He agreed that the new controls were a lot more intuitive and fun to use. So with that confirmation, I finished up all the marketing stuff I had to do, like the cover image, the screenshots, the messaging, etc. And I got it all posted up with about 20 minutes left until the deadline. I totally forgot that Ludum Dare has about an hour upload period after the deadline, so I could have spent a little more time working on everything, but I was tired and done at this point, so I called it good. In the end, this is the game. A meteor shower is headed right for us. There's a 60 second period where there's a 100% chance the planet will be hit. The world's last hope is to use our satellites to destroy the meteors before that happens. But the satellites weren't designed for this. They can only withstand two impacts before they're fully destroyed. You'll need to collect spare satellite parts to create new ones to survive the shower. The world will only be able to survive one impact. Any more, and all life will be lost. Stop all the meteors and the world is saved. In the end, I'm really pleased with the result. The game is pretty short due to restarting several times and it being the compo and all. But I think it's fun to move the satellite around and I absolutely love the aesthetics. I did a bit of a post-mortem on my stream and one thing I do wish I was able to add was a mode where you could just play around with the satellites. They look so fun just moving around and it's really enjoyable. If people like this, maybe I'll revisit it in the future. But if you do want to play with it yourself, the Construct project file is available on the itch page. I'll warn you now, it's not pretty, efficient, or commented in any way. But if you'd like to dig into it and see how I did things, feel free. If you'd like to play the game, there's a link in the description. And if you're able to and would like to rate the game, I would very much appreciate that. I really hope you enjoyed this look at what it took to make this game. It was a real struggle at points, and I tried to give up a few times. Thank you to my wife for convincing me that I didn't really want to quit. I am really glad that I pushed through and was able to get this cool little game out of it. Thank you all very much for watching. I'd like to give an extra special shout out to my patrons, especially Abishan, David Scott, Nightfall, Liam Sorta, MLK, Matsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, and Straight Up Gruntle. You're all awesome people and I truly appreciate the support. If you'd like to play this or any of my other games, you can visit vimlark.itch.io. To get in contact with me, you can stop by my Twitch streams, message me on Twitter, or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.